Welcome back to the channel. Dane Scott from Dane Scott's Trucker's Lounge. So, uh, I think I will give you a little uh, visual treat of what we're looking at here today on November 17th. All stinking ready. We got hit with two foot of snow last night. Can you believe this garbage? Mm-hmm. Isn't it lovely? It's called living in the snow belt. This is why we have to put our trucks away in the winter. And a lot of you guys know all about that. You guys down south, you're blessed. You don't have to do that. But uh, at any rate, I'm not going to complain. Uh, the power was out for like three hours. So I got a little chilly in here, but not bad. Oh, well, that's what it's like living up here in the north. I'm not going to complain. Instead, I think I'm going to give you guys a video. How's that? We're going to let you hear from an old school guy that's been a driver for, uh, goodness, he's 80 years old. So he's been driving most of his life. So I think he started driving at 19, something like that. And he's a great guy. His name's Kenny. And uh, I've known him for quite a while, and uh, he was a friend of my dad's, or an acquaintance, anyways. So uh, I said, Kenny, I want to get your story and get, uh, get some old school trucking uh, facts and fun and all that good stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to sit down over in the lounge, and we're going to invite Kenny in, and we're going to hear about some old school trucking days. So stick around town. It's 3.59 time. in a nine-speed hood I'd pull it in if I knew I could The old truck stop's been gone a long time So kick it in the rear and put the hammer down Get this show on the road, shall we? Eighteen wheels just laying it down And you can hear that humming sound Pouring coal from a bright chrome stack Ride this off like a Cadillac It's my life, it's my love It's my heat I built 359 I'm watching you guys So welcome back to the channel It's Dane Scott from Dane Scott's Truckers Lounge And I have a uh, very special guest with me today I told you guys that uh, we like all things old school trucking here not only do i like featuring the trucks and the truck shows and the individual uh trucks but i love to talk to the guys that actually lived it and did it and have the stories to prove it and uh kenny here's a veteran well, and uh i guess I, I won't push for the age but you've been around a while yeah, well. and especially the area that i'm from here the springfield uh, area which is uh northwestern pa and uh so of course, I, you've driven all over. So uh, I'm going to let him share a little bit. Maybe uh, I'll try to help you through it and maybe uh, get you started from the starting, kind of how you how you got started in the trucking. Well, I've always uh, admired trucks. You know, back uh, before 90, Interstate 90 was opened in uh, about May of, uh, of uh, 1960. 60, yeah. And so the trucks used to go around 5, the road used to go to the right, up, over, and around, and and come back down and, and over a bridge. Okay. And then there's a feed mill. The building is still there, down yeah. below where the feed that that was the feed mill, and then over along the bank, and up, and I've heard the old truckers talk about it, and uh, it was very steep. And w this this old fellow, this was like 40 years ago at least, maybe 50. Uh, he was a man my age. Mm -hmm. And he was telling about going up there. Uh, uh, it was a big deal to get to the top. Even we, you know, all he had was car motors with two-speed axles and lower yeah. geared, You know, 
So he was loaded pretty heavy, and he had an old gas outfit there with uh, vacuum brakes. Yeah. <laughs> and he uh, <laughs> he didn't quite make it to the top, and and then of course he stalled it, and then of course you don't have any brakes in the trailer. Oh my! So he had a jackknife. He he, he was thinking ahead. He was jackknifed into the bank so he wouldn't go over the bank. The other was the other wow. side yeah. into the bank going up, you know. And uh, had to get a wrecker. <laughs> wow. So Jeez. and. Let him went round five instead because you don't have Gerard and Fairview to go through and, and yeah. you know. And and route five, uh, just for you guys, Route five parallels the lake. We're at the lake shore here, Lake Erie. Yeah. So Route five would be the closest to the lake, not right on the lake, but close. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then twenty that he was just talking about is south, and that's Interstate. No, Interstate U.S. Route twenty. U.S. Route twenty. U.S. Route twenty. Yeah, and then then would be ninety, and, and like he was saying, ninety wasn't quite in yet till sixty. Right, right. That's when it come in. So it's route. It's actually five in New York State, but it's the state route, state Pennsylvania, state New York. It goes clear up into Massachusetts. Oh, does it I really? Guess, I guess it's. Uh, I Mass didn't realize that. Uh, well, it goes way over so there. So you got. Uh, so about how old were you when you started thinking you were going to want to drive some drive well, a truck? Well, I was, uh, see, I was nine and 51. My parents bought the farm there. And it was, uh, I was, uh, I'd, uh, I'd, my dad put me on a tractor, a farm tractor, and I was, wasn't was quite nine yet. Mm -hmm. A little Ferguson tractor, you know, but but I, I did, he put me out plowing, disking, everything, even spraying later, a little later, not much later. And driving ton and a half truck around, you know, on the farm, and uh, I don't know, just got a love for trucking, and we used to watch them all go by. And, right. And uh, so you you never, you would be out there in the field, maybe disking or something, and see a truck go yeah. by, and kind of like, <laughs> yeah, could probably look back on your disking and see see it doing this. <laughs> I say, well, a truck must have went by right there because he was watching trucks. Uh, well, anyway, uh, years later, uh, they had a produce guy come by and, and he wanted to buy green tomatoes. He was out in North Carolina and in the fall of the year the, the tomatoes are uh, the lowland tomatoes are done down in the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. It's uh, past the season. And uh, so uh, they get them out of well anywhere they can get them up around here. This fellow was just, uh, just one trucker trying to buy tomatoes and make a buck, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, actually, I got got to know him, and he hauled a couple loads. Uh, most of them come from our place, I think, or a lot of them did at least. And uh, mature green, just before they turn red, you know. And uh, anyway, we got acquainted with some people down there, and uh, and dealt with uh, you know that the package there from chain chain stores and and uh, restaurants and so forth. And uh, so. Uh, I got acquainted with him, and, and later I got my own truck and, and hauled tomatoes myself. Six, it was 61. 61, so you were about yeah, 19? 19, yeah. And yeah. you already had a truck that you bought? Or? No, that, that was, I, was, I went with him. Oh, okay. And I okay. learned that he had that four-cylinder Detroit. <laughs> okay. and It was it, an over-the-road truck. And what kind of truck was it? It was a GMC. Okay, four GMC. Four-cylinder four Detroit. Like one of them old cannonballs, you think? Or one uh, they call a cannonball? Well, or? It, well it had the, uh, it was a, uh, what is that, a uh, six, they had several numbers there, six three seventy. digit numbers. Yeah, with a four, or what, 453 four, Detroit? Well, I, I don't really know, but it was probably a 71, I would think. Yeah, okay. But it was still slow. 471. And uh, so it went to... Uh, Took a load of apples out of uh, Virginia down to uh, three stops in Texas, and uh, that was quite an experience for me. No, no interstates, mom and pop places everywhere. I mean, real mom and pop. You know, yeah. mom ran the restaurant and dad ran the three pumps out yeah. there.
just to be clear, so at that time, we're probably not talking to any brokers involved. We're talking what the trucker would buy the load himself, basically, and well, then try to sell brokers. it. Uh, there was a, uh, strangely enough, I can still remember the broker's name. It was uh, Joy M. Rowe in uh, Winchester, Virginia, uh, found this load for this fella. And uh, I met him down there in, uh, in Winchester. Some of them came from right there locally, and then we had to go back over into West Virginia there. That's just not very far over to West Virginia from, from uh, Winchester. Yeah. And uh, so we had two, two pickups and three deliveries. <laughs> that was quite an experience. So what did you pick up? Just ap uh, all apples. More apples? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> all, all we had a, it was a 32-foot uh, produce trailer. Had, uh, it was old then, but uh, there was still quite a few of them around. This is... Uh, you know, I'm ten years old maybe, mm -hmm. and uh, it had a little bunker in the front, and you know, about fourteen inches wide, maybe not very wide, but you could get uh, ice just about anywhere back then. You know, all the truck stops had it, and uh, is that what you mean by the bunker? That's where yeah, the ice that's went. Yeah, that's where the ice went. And it had a blower. It had a little little uh, lawnmower motor there, like a Briggs and Stratton yeah, motor yeah. that you see on the front of them. Yeah, that, and yeah. all that did was blow air, right? A fan, air, and right. the ice was in that bunker. Right. Okay. Uh, and then yeah. they had, uh, of course, uh, if you had something you don't want to get too hot, why well, uh, you open the the uh, doors, little doors up in the corners. And then usually one, in the, got to be one in the back mm -hmm. to go out. Yeah. And uh, so that's that's what produce trail. And I've heard you can, you know, for insulated good, it'll keep stuff down to, you know, forty degrees or yeah. right in right around there. Maybe that's 30, amazing. Thirty-eight degrees, maybe. So uh, a lot of a lot of them were were that were just produce trailers. So that was that that made me <laughs> that was quite an experience. I, yeah, I really enjoyed that. And uh, it, it so uh, later on '64, I got a, an old R model and and an old trailer, an old uh, reefer, and uh, an old R model International. R model okay. International, yeah. Yeah. And uh, as you know, that's the same as basically the same truck as an L model, but a little different than a grill. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, what was it? I think I had the two little windows in the back. Well, anyway, uh, the uh, the others had uh, just one single one, I believe. The okay. late, later ones, I think. Still a gas motor at that time, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah Four fifty. Four fifty gas. Yeah. Yeah, I blew that thing up a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> They're a good motor if you didn't horse them, you know. But yeah. What kind of gear in? Uh, boy, I don't know. It had an overdrive transmission. That fifth gear was up, you know, uh -huh. the U shape. Okay. And uh, so it probably run a little, a little. I think those were considered a little fast, little uh, higher geared. Could have been so a five so and two then. You think? Oh yeah, it was a five and two. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. was a five and two, right? Yeah. But uh, I think the. Uh, uh, how was it? Fourth, fourth low and fifth, fourth low and fourth high, and then, and then you went from fourth high to fifth high. I don't believe you used fifth low. I think I was yeah. Really well, on my cracker box there, you're over here. You're at, uh, you're in fourth low, and then you go uh, to fifth low, and then you come back for fourth high. And then, yeah, fifth high. yeah, it's progressive. Yeah, yeah, you're against the dash or whatever well, for fifth high. Yeah, I guess you, maybe you could have done that. I don't know. I, yeah, I think I made a nine speed out of it. Yeah, right. Anyway, so that was your own rig then. <laughs> yeah, it was such as it was. Yeah. <laughs> and I hauled steel. I tried hauling steel there. I, I tried. I, I had enough of it about that one winter. Uh huh. But I did haul steel there for about six months out of, or maybe almost six months out of Youngstown. Youngstown was booming then. Yeah. Really, really going strong. I bet. Steel trucks everywhere. Steel mills, steel working places all over. Uh, it was this whole totally different than it is now. Uh, but so you probably had to have a flatbed for that, right? Yeah. Here. Well, I had uh, I had uh, pulled uh, Jim Erskine's trailers. Uh, Brown. Uh, he had two two. Uh, ICC numbers or whatever I think they called them then. Uh, Brown and Erskine and mm -hmm. his, Jim Erskine. Anyway, somebody might remember that name from back around this area. You uh, 
You said you had kind of a close call, a little bit of a fire action there on that truck, that R model, right? Oh yeah, man. I, just a dumb farm boy. I didn't, Need to uh, change your underwear after that one, huh? <laughs> Why don't you tell us about that? <laughs> well, this is my first 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 trip with green tomatoes, and I was uh, I'd worked all day to load the truck. You know, I had help, but I think I probably fingerprinted every box, you know, to put them in place yeah. right. And I, I had like 750 to 800 boxes, uh, 40 pound boxes, but they, they probably had more than 40 pounds in them. Mm -hmm. Paper boxes with a divider in, you know, and uh, cardboard, uh, heavy yep. cardboard. That's what we hauled them in. And uh, so uh, I pulled in, uh, back in, in uh, 64, uh, 79 was only done from uh, uh, the one with the exit below 422, what is that? The Portersville exit. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I went down to the Portersville truck stop, pulled it up, told the guy to pack it in. Well, he can't pack it in, but he knows what I mean. Fill it up all the way up. Yeah. And he did. Pulled that emergency brake, and I had the old type, you know, on the on the drive, uh, the... Uh, oh, yeah, the uh, drive shaft brake drive or shaft, whatever. Yeah, yeah. A little, little wheel there. And then I forgot to release it. And of course, it's loaded so heavy, I didn't feel it, you know. And I went down the road a couple of miles and just turned to go up uh, a little. It's only like a mile, maybe over to 79. It was done. It was open from there down. And uh, looked back, and that thing was on fire. And I, uh, the fire, I could see the fire. And I, 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 I just told the guy with me. I said, "Get out and run." And I, I, I stopped. Pulled the hand valve down and, and we got out of there as quick as possible. <laughs> Boy, I was scared. It, it, I thought sure it was going to blow. Yeah. But miraculously, because I filled it all the way up, and I don't know if the vent was plugged or what, there's a vent over on the side. Of course, the fire was right underneath, but it was actually up above the, right directly underneath the, the gas tank. It was a, a real saddle tank. Uh -huh. Not just two tanks on angle iron, but it had a saddle, you know, about that much right. across the top and all the way. So you could you could use either side and pull that off the top, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what I did. I usually went and used the one side and ran, started to spit in a little bit, and then I went over to the other side and find a gas station. And had all that. Uh, anyway, uh, and, and miraculously, it didn't it didn't uh, it didn't hurt anything. Yeah, I had. Uh, so Steel. you just stood back far, and you're like, she's going to well, blow, I, I and stopped, it never blew, huh? Stopped traffic, and uh, it burned for quite a while, because all the crud from the... It was an old truck. It probably had a half a million miles on it. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe that's a stretch, but it had a lot of miles on it. And all that... Uh, the uh, transmission uh, oil was leaking, and and, uh, and all the dirt, you know, and so forth. Right. And, and that crud was like that thick on the underneath, all underneath there. Cleaned that all and off, cleaned huh? Cleaned all that off, yeah. <laughs> and uh, finally, it it didn't blow, and I see it was, you know, I had a Greyhound bus stopped. I had, uh, boy, what a night! I, I, but it finally burned itself out, and uh, I took off, and went down the road. That's crazy. We, I had a guy wow. with me. By the grace of God, that's what it was. Yeah. It, it was just uh, so what was burning probably oil. was the all that oil it crud had to be and everything. All that, and all that oil that was I built can't up imagine on there. The, the the temperature inside them tanks, though, that's just wild. Well, it um, yeah, um, it didn't burn that long, and I, and of course it was full. So uh, yeah, but for that matter, I have seen gasoline boil. Have you ever seen it boil? No. <laughs> Well, uh, I've seen it a couple times on a farm tractor on a real hot day, you know. Uh, uh, International 300 we had uh, us disking with, and I know one time I uh, I was, this is another miracle, I was disking and I thought, well, I'll, I'll uh, just stand up here and get a hold on to the steering wheel, and I went up and uh, reached up and it was so hot it, it, it come up in my face. And there happened to be a ditch right there that uh, drains the railroad property and mm -hmm. actually goes out to Scott Road. And <laughs> no relation to this Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, uh, I don't know. I, that's another miracle. I, I guess I, uh, 
I don't remember shutting it off or what I did, but the next thing I know I was over in the creek washing my eyes out. Mm -hmm. I guess I closed my eyes in time, but... So just the combination of uh, where the gas but, tank but is I, over the motor? I literally saw it boil. You yeah. can see it boil. I've seen it twice, I think. So I hope you guys are enjoying uh, hearing uh, Kenny tell us about his uh, close calls and uh, experiences and adventures in uh, his trucking career. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a two-parter because I try to keep my videos around 20 minutes, somewhere in that vicinity. So um, we got a little more to go with Kenny and uh, some more uh, experiences. So, hey, I'm going to make this two parts. Stick around town for part two. And in the meantime, if you would, like the video and subscribe. Um, we're coming up on a milestone on the channel, which would be 10,000 subscribers. Um, I'm about... Uh, just a little under 2,000 away. And uh, what I'd like to ask you guys, if you enjoy this content, if all you subscribers would just ask one other person and invite them to the channel, ask them to subscribe and to uh, check out the videos, uh, it would really help the channel, and especially through the winter months, um, the way the channel is supported is basically <clears throat> through advertisement. You know, they, they uh, give you a little bit. So it kind of helps pay the bills, keep things going when I can't chase so many trucks during the winter. I would appreciate it. So um, I guess that's going to be a wrap this time. So uh, stay tuned for part two, and we'll give you some more of Kenny's great trucking adventures.